Hi Kirby fans, welcome to another episode of Kirby Enthusiast. In today's episode, what we're going to be doing is jumping back in that G4 and getting those new bearings fitted. So what we'll do is we'll jump straight to it. Welcome back to the channel. Again, those who are new to the channel, if you haven't already and you checked out the other videos and you find you're getting value out of this content, then contemplate slapping that subscribe button, dinging that bell for notifications, give us a big thumbs up, and comment down below. I will reply to the comment, and if I like what you comment, I'll pin it to the video. So what we're going to be doing today is jumping back into that G4. We're going to be getting those bearings fitted. It's quite a simple process, and you'll be quite surprised how easy it is to fit those bearings. So what we'll do is we'll jump straight to it. Now to put it back on, you can either put it in a voice, so you get your new bearing, put your new bearing on there, might be easier in a voice, and then what I do, get it central, tap that with a plastic hammer, okay, and that's on, and then what I do, is I use just a screwdriver connector, an old screwdriver to connect and that will literally slide over there so when you get that central and you get that on a block which I'll show you outside we'll get it on a block and we'll literally tap that all the way down ok so we're just going to get a block I'll put it under there put it on there because you don't want to damage that thread put that on top there it's going down Okay, it might be easier in a voice, but and that is fully down because that's that there literally sleeves over there, and I literally just keep that just for changing my Kirby bearings. So now we've got our new armature with our new bearing. There's our old bearing. You can tell which is the old one because it puts a little imprint off with that pulley. So we've got this bearing freshly fitted, running sweet as a knot, this curve is going to be running absolutely beautiful. So first up, we've got to put that washer back in the bottom here, because that fell out. That's in. Then what we're going to do is put that just in there. Give it a shake, and then we're going to drop this armature back in like so okay next up we're going to fit our new bearing plates the old ones here so we won't need that but I've, I've got another video where I show you how to change these bearings and you can buy these bearings I will put a link in the description where you can get these bearings from they're quite simple to change I just decided because my G4 was 25 years old I'd actually change this plate and put a, a new one on Right, so this is our bearing plate. I'm going to put a link in the description below where to get it. So make sure you check those out. So these are quite reasonable and quite cheap. They actually come with obviously the new bearing. You get the new rubber seal around there. You even get a cancer sticker. Woohoo. <laughs> the joys of ordering things from the States. But safety first. So just peel that cancer sticker off. And this will just plunk straight on. Now don't forget, this is your exhaust part. On the front section, that's the exhaust section, and that's going to literally slot on like so. So we slide that straight over, and that locks in place. And we're going to get our four little bolts. Now again, don't over tighten them, because you don't want to warp it. So those will just go in there, and we get our little bolt, and put that in there. Now you don't want to over tighten them, like I said, you don't want to warp this panel. So we've got a nice new rubber seal on here as well. So that should stop any dust or anything going in there. Put your bolt in. So, rip her over. Now what I find is if you keep these bolts together you don't sort of get them mixed up. But like I suggested in the previous video, as you're taking your Kirby apart, just make sure that you put get a piece of cardboard, label up what you've 
where you've got the bolts from. So label it where you've got the bolts from and away you go. So now we've got the front bearing plate on. We're literally going to put the little plastic cog on the back. This is what your tech drive runs off. And then push that down. And then our little circlet, which should be here where I put it. And that's literally going to hold that in place. Oops. Ah. So we just get our circuit holders. And then we're going to put that back on there. Make sure it's fully down. Which what I like to do is just get a little slatted screwdriver and just tap it. That's fully down. And just make sure that circ clip is on by turning it, checking it's in the groove, which it is, that's not coming out. See, so that's working fine. Okay, next up we'll get our case in, we'll start putting it back in. We'll put these bushes back in. So we can put the one in this side. This one we'll keep out because we need to get this light attachment first. So we'll put this one back in first. Right, so we're just going to fit our fan. I'm fitting the old fan. This is a fan I replaced about six months ago. Now you can notice a bit of damage on the end of the blades. So that's purely from dog hairs, so there's nothing hard being sucked up. So there's plenty of use left in this fan. Now all you got to remember first up is what I tend to do is put a tiny bit of grease in there, which will again is the Avalia problem that people are having with that little wind down whistle. But if you put a tiny bit of grease in there just you don't get that wind down whistle okay and we get our washer with a grommet so that goes in first Walk that excess off then we've got our plastic washer then our fan goes on like so then our metal washer and then our spindle which tightens uh, anti-clockwise okay now to tighten it it's up to you I normally just do them hand tight so I normally hold that and that's normally enough if you want to do it a little bit tighter then you what you actually need is a 9mm spanner okay so don't get a wedge in these screwdrivers or anything in here a 9mm spanner literally slots down there clips on and then we just tighten this just nip it up, there you go, and that is plenty, it doesn't have to be mega tight, we can spanner and out it comes. So it's literally a 9mm spanner, will slot straight down there, saves you damage in the armitage or anything. And that is beautiful. So what we'll do now is we'll just get this back in the casing and uh, see how this baby runs. So when you slot this back in the case and just make sure that your actual wires are clipped underneath in the little slots just so they don't catch and get in the way of here. We're just going to slot that back in and just put it back together in the reverse order that it was taken apart. Washers, so it's our bolts with our washers literally going there. And you can tighten these by hand or you can tighten them with a bladder gun. Just do them slowly just to make sure they're not threaded. That's not threaded. Get our second one with a washer on, and that goes in there as well. Now, if you've got a G7, they have got an earth strap which connects on there as well. G4 doesn't have one for some reason. We'll flip her over and put our bottom two bolts in. Now these 
these are threaded bolts, they're not self tappers like you've got in the centre is onwards. So don't thread them. Okay, so next up we're going to fit our light connection. So I've put the bush back in where I will take that out because I find it easier to fit it without the bush in place. We'll grab our light. Put our bottom one in first. And then push that in situ. I normally just use a slight screwdriver just to push that in. So it's clipped in place. That's in. And then put the top one in. And that is literally just for your headlight. Before we put this in, you need to put your exhaust in and this little plate here. So just lift that out, whilst it doesn't fall out, just register it there. Slot that in, and there should be a little self tapper that should hold its own. If it doesn't, I find it easy just to get a tiny little screwdriver and literally just pull that to itself. That way then you can slide this in without it falling out. Obviously in the later models, this is still is permanently fitted in the centrias and the other layers. So you don't need to worry about fiddling to get that in. But that is all clipped in there. Okay, so then we've got a little tiny screw that goes in here. So we clip that in. You don't actually need it, they don't put it in the later models. And, and I've mislaid at the moment, so I won't worry about it because they don't go in the centrias anyway. Kirby seem to have done it away with it, so that slots on there. Got our long bolts, which will go in the front. There's one there. So we're just going to put our two big bolts in. Put one in there, and the other one there. So go slowly, just not to round them off. Got our two bolts that go in there, like so. Oops. And that one. There we go. Okay, now we'll just connect our bush back up. So it's the same process, slot that in there. Push that against your armitage and it will locate in the bottom bit first. It's a little slot that just slots in like so and then just push it back in there and we can put our Phillips screw back in. And we just drop our bar back in. In, lift that up, drop our tech drive back in, so lift that off. Now this is an Avalier tech drive and um, I did replace it a fair few months back so I will put a link below in the description of where to get these, the spanner, um, everything I've used in this video. So I should check those out. Always make sure she's in drive when you get a slotter in. And it's just these three bolts. There. And these are Torx bolts. So these are your Torx 20s. Oops. Back on. Okay, again, these are roughly central. You should have marks where the bolts have been when you put these back on. Again, just make sure it's on that front prong. If you've got a G3 or a G4 and it's the old style yoke, 
then it's literally slots in the middle. There's a little bar that goes in the middle, but this is off a of Centria, literally so I could go both ways and actually lock the position on it. So this is again is Phillips. switch so it's literally lift your on off bar up slot that in the side of your switch like so oops Slot there over. Also, easy as. So next up, we've got our two bolts to go at the back. We're going to put our top plate on. Then we'll connect our power lead. So slot this over. There's a Phillips again. Now I did have to put new bolts in here a couple of months back and I had to re-tap them because they'd worn from being on in and out, in and out constantly. So you might have that issue with your G4 depending how often it's been serviced and literally the amount of time it's been took apart. But now, when we get this together, should run like a new machine. So what's left to do now is to connect our lead and put our back plate on. So just slip that in there, put our lead under there. And so that's in. Got a little tiny soft tapper screw that goes where the lead is. Here is that. Got a plastic cover which goes in here. Then mine is threaded, so I've got to get a bigger bolt for here. It's been on and off that many times. I did re thread it with a bigger bolt, but it just literally pushes through. So I've got to get that re-tapped. So I will get like a riveted, a threaded rivet and put that in there. And then I can put a bit of bolt in there. So that's a bit of a fix. But we'll do it some other point. And then it's literally a screw at the back. And that is that. So I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you're getting really good value out of this content. And again, those who are new to the channel, if you haven't already and you are getting value out of this content, then consider slapping that subscribe button so you support the channel, ding that bell for notifications, give us a big thumbs up and comment down below. I will reply to the comment and if you like what you comment, I'll pin it to the video. So what we'll do is we'll jump to the bloopers and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye. We're going to be getting the... So on you. Kirby, on your um, so on your front section you've got this part here, and that's the exhaust section. Yeah.